Okay, so dosages based on weight. We've actually already done these in the context of those titration problems that we just finished. Um, so in those titration problems, we were having to calculate the dosage based on weight before we calculated the amount of IV solution. So we're just basically doing the same thing here, except for it's very specific to the weight. We're just doing the dosage part. We don't have to get the upper limit and the lower limit necessarily. So I've got an example. A physician has ordered 250 milligrams per kilogram per day of a drug for an adult who weighs 115 pounds. And we want to know how many milligrams of, of the drug should the of this drug should the patient receive in one day, and if the patient is to receive a dose every six hours, how much should they receive in each dose? So <coughs> I'm kind of underlying the important information here. I've got the order, right, the amount that's been ordered, which is 250 milligrams per kilogram per day. So this order has been given in per kilogram, and our patient weighs 115 pounds. So um, <coughs> we would multiply this by 115 pounds, but there's one problem. Uh, the, the dose, the ordered amount is in kilograms, and our patient, we have the weight in pounds. But I actually, I know how to convert pounds to kilograms, right? We know that there are 2.2 pounds per kilogram, and I want the pounds to cancel, so I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor of 2.2 pounds on the bottom and 1 kilogram on the top. My pounds cancel out, and when I do this conversion, I can see I've got, I've still got my, this factor hanging out. You could do this conversion separately before you do the dosage calculation, um, if that's easier for you. So 115 divided by 2.2 ends up as 52.272727. So we'll round to 27. So now I've got my answer in terms of kilograms, and I see my kilograms cancel out. So I can do 250 multiplied by 52.27, and that gives me 13. 0, 6, 8, if we round milligrams per day. Okay, because my ca kilograms cancel out, and all I have left is milligrams on the top and days on the bottom. So there you have it. You have your dose per day. It's our daily dose. Okay, but we want to figure out, answer the next question, which is if the patient is to receive a dose every six hours, how much should they receive with each dose? Um, and so, I have it per day, and you can go about this a couple different ways. We can convert the per day to per hour, and then multiply that by six for six hours. Or you can think about how many periods of six hours are there in a day. Well, 24 divided by six is four. So, you're going to give the drug... four times a day, which means you, you need to divide this daily dose up by four. So a couple different ways. Let's go through the converting it to per hour and then multiplying by six, just so we can practice our dimensional analysis a little bit. So to convert to per hour, I would take the one zero, 13,068 milligrams per day. And I know there are 24 hours per day. And I, I put the day on top. Can you see why I put the day on top? Because I want them to cancel out because I want it in a per hour. So <coughs> when I do that, I get, take the 13,068 and divide it by the 24, I get 544.5 milligrams per hour. And then I want this to be every six hours. So in order to do that, if I take the top and the bottom and multiply it by six, over six, remember any number divided by itself is just one. So I'm not changing the amount in this drug. I'm just changing the way, that I'm basically writing an equivalent fraction where I can have six hours on the bottom. 
So if we take the 544.5 and multiply it by 6, I get 300, or excuse me, 3,267 milligrams. And then I have my 6 hours in the bottom like I wanted. So it's 3,267 milligrams per every 6 hours or 13,068 per day. And if you had gone this route that I initially talked about where you figure out how many times per day, right, by dividing by the number of hours and taking that amount of times and dividing this into four equal parts, right, taking this number and dividing it by four, you would get the exact same answer. So either way, however you wrap your brain around it, um, both ways work equally well. Uh, this way is nice because it allows us to practice our dimensional analysis and think about things, understand that these dosage calculations are really just math and still follow all the rules of math that you already know.